Hello and welcome to the most troubled yet together family on channel 515, Fritzy Factory TV. That's right, today we'll be talking about that one family that really needs to admit themselves into some therapy. You know, everyone is basically dead due to a murder closely tied to the father in the family and his death was caused by, well, sewage side. The Afton family is pretty much the pinnacle force in the Five Nights at Freddy's lore, especially since the protagonist and the antagonist of the majority of the games is an Afton. But today we are not talking about the games. Oh no, we are going to discuss one of the most controversial opinions that came from the recent full-length movie trailer. Okay, maybe not the most controversial, that probably is if the last animatronic shown is Golden Freddy or just Freddy. But come on people, it's Golden Freddy. Lighting will just change the perspective of color because you know, color theory. The other pseudo controversy that I've been seeing bubbling around the community is if Mike Schmidt played by Josh Hutcherson is truly Steve Raglan aka William Afton played by Matthew Lillard's son. That's a wordful. Mouthful? Wordful. I'm gonna make wordful a thing. Kinda like wordle, but wordful. Due to the first interaction we as an audience see between the two, made many fans believe that they might not be related. After all, the idea of Michael Afton being the protagonist of most of the games dating to the first one under different names is just a theory and has never been confirmed by Scott Cawthon. Just like 99% of this game's lore. So after that first interaction between the two on the phone led many fans to believe they're not related. At all. Here's the thing. I'm not one of those people. I still believe that Mike Schmidt in the movie will still turn out to be Michael Afton we all know and love. With hidden clues slash easter eggs to simple sociology or psychology, I don't know science, I'm a theater major, of a broken family due to traumatic events. Was that the bite of 87? We'll explain why Mike is truly the oldest Afton child. First off, in FNAF history there have been nods to past games and books to either help guide theorists in lore expeditions or just put a smile on a dedicated fan's face. It's just a way for Scott to nudge us and be like, Hey, I know the lore is confusing but here's a hint. And I believe that certain easter eggs slash nods are trying to tell us something important. The first that many theorists, including myself, notice the clothes. We all have that first image of Matthew Lillard as good old Willie Afton burning our brains. Then there's a scene with Mike during the little phone call. Wanna know what he's wearing? A blue button down shirt and a yellow tie. Almost like a yin and yang situation. This could be a subtle metaphor for how these two boys are related to one another yet are completely different. Um, because one's a murderer and the other one is trying to stop the murderer from being a murderer. There is another clue within this scene that points to another Afton connection. If you squint harder into the background, you see quite a familiar object on the wall. That's right, a sun clock. If you're not familiar, in the cutscenes between Knight's and Sister location while you chill out and watch some immortal and the restless, there is also a sun clock. This room is placed within the Afton home in which Michael spends his nights after every shift from the bunker. This could correlate that Michael is still living in their old family home without the father present, but I find that kind of weird slash wrong. That would mostly mean that the house Mike and Abby are living in has an underground bunker filled with killer animatronics which I don't think Willy Boy would leave behind as killer robotic henchmen. So how does the clock end up in Mike's home? Well, many people believe in the past that William and his wife got a divorce. During a divorce, items can be separated between the two individuals as they move into their own prospective homes. Maybe instead of it residing in William's house that the game shows, maybe it ends up with Mother Afton. Now that Mother Afton seems to not be present in the story, whether she has passed or is just somewhere else, Mike could have inherited the clock once moving into his own place while he houses Abby. Now, this is just me taking some evidence from the trailer, which is just me mostly inferring what I have learned in my acting classes in college since, you know, theater student. So I've been studying body language and why people do what they do and what their motives are behind it with the objectives and tactics, you know, stuff that may not interest you, but interests me. That first little scene with Willy Boy in the trailer is him answering to Mike about the night security job position. For pre-context, they seem to have met before this phone call as Mike has a business card. That is why he knows about this job and most likely met William in a brief moment to receive the card. I believe that this exchange most likely happened during this water fountain brawl scene within the mall, where Mike was a security guard but sadly lost his job due to beating a poor dude senseless. William was most likely there. Heck, for all we know, he could have been stalking Mike from a distance, wanting to so desperately reconnect with his son. Once the moment happens, William swoops in and is like, hey. 
No, that's not how William would talk. Hey. No. Hey, if you need a job, just call this number. Yep, that's a William voice right there. And telling by the notice of delinquency sign of Mike's front door hinting at a possible eviction, he kind of needs a job. Now, if you rewatch that scene, watch Lillard's body language. Overall, Lillard is an amazing actor, and this scene is just... And I can't wait to see more in the movie. Anywho, the way he takes a small little pause and says yes, as though he's containing excitement. Yes. Like his plan is coming to fruition, but he must play it cool over the phone. Now, why put Mike, William's own son, in danger with these feral animatronics? I don't know. Maybe because William is just a tad bit messed up? Just a bit? Heck, it could be a correlation of that story of Afton wanting to turn Carl into an animatronic human hybrid like him. So in this context, he and his son can be together forever. By the way, I don't know much about this story. I just remember seeing Rye Toast's video on this where he also believes Mike Schmidt is Michael Afton. So if you want to watch that video, I'll have the link down in the description below. It's a good video. Anyways, I truly don't know why else he would bring Mike over to the job unless it's just to get closer to his long lost son. Now, there has been one idea that has led this fandom to be so divided on whether they're related or not. The main reason seems to be the context clues hinting to if these two met in person? Wouldn't Mike recognize his own father? Most people believe that Mike should recognize his father, and since he doesn't, it's a clear sign that they're not related at all. Which I believe is baloney. A little theory, I know, right? A theory in FNAF? Crazy. Is that after the death of Mike's younger brother, otherwise known as the Bite of 83, William distanced himself from his own family. Maybe the goal was to murder children, but not his own. The guilt of what he has done led him to abandon his family, change his identity, and continue his devious plans without further harming his own family. With William out of the picture, how is Mike coping with, well, everything? Death can be very traumatic for a young child, especially if it is your little brother and that you were the main factor that caused the tragic accident. Also, your father left you, so that doesn't help. Through the teaser and full-length trailer, there seems to be this odd scene happening in the woods involving present-day Mike, almost as though it's not true reality, like a dream. Also, side tangent, Mike seems to be a very sleepy boy with dreams and a well nightmares. I wonder if this is just a nod to the most accepted yet low theory from the FNAF series, the dream theory. If you want to know more about it, watch Game Theory's video on it after this video. Link will be in the description below along with Rai Toast. Back to the dream sequence, there is a specific part shown where a little boy with a sad expression is looking out the back of a car with what seems to be a woman in the driver's seat. Then it cuts back to Mike looking out towards the vehicle. This could be the third Afton child plaguing Mike's mind. Now, I had to think this one through. If the bite of 83 did indeed happen, why would Mike go back to working at this establishment even with his past trauma? Maybe he just really needs the money and after his little accident at the mall, Freddy Fazbear's is the only place of employment that'll take him with his background. Or it could be a case of trauma bonding. Trauma bonding is when an individual develops an attachment to the trauma-induced person, place, or thing. That could be a psychological default from his PTSD that keeps him applying to security jobs and coming back to places that tie in with his horrific past. The last point to tie in with Mike's definite PTSD. Sometimes individuals will permanently block out certain parts of the traumatic event. So even though he's tied down to certain aspects, he doesn't remember the rest. Maybe he permanently blocked out his father to the point that with William's whole identity change, he's unrecognizable. It's all just a theory. Huh? In the end, I do believe that Mike Schmidt will turn out to be Michael Afton. Maybe the last name change is just him going by his middle name or even taking his mother's maiden name. Heck, maybe if the mother got remarried, he might have just taken the new step-parent's last name. It is all possible all comes in this wacky franchise. Life is not always black and white, so for people to just think he's not an Afton all of a sudden just because of a small little trailer, I think that's kind of crazy. But I could be wrong. We just gotta wait till October 27th to see what the truth is. Now if you're new around here, I ask all you beautiful creatures a question to answer in the comments below. The question today is, do you think Mike Schmidt is Michael Afton? Why or why not? While you comment, I'll be responding in the first 30 minutes up to an hour after the video is posted. But for now, it's time for me to say goodbye for the day. Thank you all for tuning into this episode of Fritzy Factory TV, and I hope you decide to join me on this channel. Fritzy, signing off.